Life is a gift and a journey. Towards what goal are you journeying? This gift of life, where do you want to spend it? With whom? For what? Whoever you are, wherever you are, God is inviting you to be His special messenger, to bring His word, His love, His joy, His peace to all peoples through the communications media. Most Holy Trinity, the sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the following. Special intentions of Harmonic Singers and Their Families Mr. Ricardo O. Santiago Sr. Castillo Families Rebi de Tablan Emil and Vivian Sison Teresita Villa Abrilie Don and Marilyn Lalien Louis and Marilu Cadilena Kelly, Carol, and Karin Carumba And for the intentions of all the volunteers in this Holy Mass Thanksgiving intentions of Elsie Castillo, Attorney Jose Climaco and Family, Dream Vet Group Philippines Incorporated, Vita Rivera's Bookkeeping Services, for the success of lovely Miyazaki as a medical staff in Hawaii, Phil Philadelphia Ligutum, Dolfo and Malu Ato, Attorney Ruben Abar Abarquez, Benji Edher, Joy Lacinario, Agro Industrial Foundation College of the Philippines and Mr. and Mrs. Leo Carbonell. Where's the intentions of Mona Lisa E. Camacho, Melanie Plenius Estacio, and Chief Mate Bernie Aguilar. Blessings and good health of Mrs. Sofia Basalo for the success of the 20th Gales Clan Reunion 2013. Safe travel of Jacqueline Basalo Benigay and children for the early recovery and complete healing of Mila Villa Abrilie, Athena Marasigan, LP Gio Barcelona, and Jermaine Chu for the eternal repose of Adela Villa Abrilie, Jose de Kipil, Flor de Rica de Kipil, Philomena Dezer, Sister Agnes Pinez, Sister Emma Garol, 
Pablo and Carmen Calunsag, Edgar, Crespino Alzacaren, Jane, Evelyn, Joselito, Melchor, Maria Celine, and the Holy Souls in Purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. Jesus, our Lord, is risen. Alleluia! Today, we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead. This is the central mystery of our faith as Christians. As the Apostle Paul tells us, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith in him is useless. We too are invited to rise with Jesus. But first, we have to die to our old self, our selfish desires, hopelessness, and misery. Only then shall we rise again as new men and women, repentant, full of hope and happiness. Our confidence lies in Jesus who conquered the power of sin and death. United with him, we too can become new persons. To officiate our Holy Mass is Archbishop Emeritus Most Reverend Fernando Capalia. This Holy Mass is brought to you in cooperation with the Harmonic Singers of Davao City, Basalo Family, and Agro-Industrial Foundation College of the Philippines. Let us joyfully sing and celebrate. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the second mysteries on this Easter day. I confess and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus is the heart of the early Christian charisma. That is the public announcement of God's salvation through Jesus' victory over death. The first reading. From the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning to Galilee after the baptism, the Jod preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. 
He went about doing good and healing all those suppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets who bore witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes that rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, on this beautiful Easter morning, I'd like to share with you something that you already know, but can have a special significance on this day and it's about suffering you know there are two kinds of suffering suffering as a problem and suffering as a mystery when we consider problem as uh, suffering as a problem we know that there are many remedies to avoid the problem, the suffering and the pain. And science has come up with a lot of solutions and remedies to manage pain, if not to eradicate pain and suffering. But suffering as a mystery, it's something that uh, we should think about this morning. Why is suffering called a mystery? because in that suffering is hidden God's wonderful, beautiful love. In that, in that crucifix over there, you see Jesus hanging there because of love. Every part of his body is experiencing pain and he suffers for it all because of love for all of us. Now, we are expected to have the, the faith in order to be fascinated, to be moved, to be touched by the love hidden in suffering. Not only that we should feel sad because that person over there is suffering, is writhing in pain, his bloody, uh, his bloody figure dripping with blood and his ugly face crying with, with thorns. But behind it, we should, be, we should feel, well, maybe happy because we can see God's love hidden in suffering. And the expectation of the church, every time we celebrate the Paschal mystery or the Passion death, death and death of Jesus is that we should, we should be fascinated by the beauty of the love of God. Now in that, in that figure on the cross, Jesus is telling us, I also, as God, I made you beautiful. As a human being, I made you beautiful. You are so beautiful that I decided to become like you in everything except sin. But I gave you also freedom to make use of your body, your soul, and your spirit in order to, to give glory to me, the maker, the creator, the planner of the beauty that you have and that you are. But you misuse, you abuse the freedom that I gave you. 
So you are no longer beautiful. You are ugly because there is no more proportion, no more harmony, no more integrity in your, in your human psyche. And I'm here to restore that beauty in you by telling you that you should follow me. In other words, that you should also die to your selfishness, to your greed, to your hatred and unkindness to others and to yourself, so that you will become again beautiful. And if you are again beautiful, you should also see to it that others become beautiful. And real beauty is, is not skin deep, it's not external, it's not on the, on the dress or the hair dough or, or the shoes, but in, in, in the soul and in the spirit. Beauty is soul deep, not skin deep. And if you use properly your freedom, you can also respect the environment and make it, make it beautiful by respecting the beauty of nature. But look what's happening today in many places of the world. Because of greed, they abuse their freedom and the environment is destroyed. And we have the victims of the calamities around us and people suffering. But wherever there is suffering, I am there because I, I assume human flesh. And wherever human flesh is suffering in pain, there is also me who assume humanity because of love. And therefore, you should take care of your body and your spirit because I became one like you in order to make you beautiful. Brothers and sisters, that is the message of Easter Sunday. It's the beginning of a new life, a new way of looking at things. There are many beautiful things and beautiful persons around, but we need the third eye of faith to be fascinated, to, be per to perceive the beauty in people and in creation. The most beautiful creation of God is the human figure, the human being, especially one that is baptized and received the grace of God. The sanctifying grace that we receive at baptism is actually a power that enables us to participate in the life of God, which is love. And love is the effect of beholding beauty. You love a beautiful figure a beautiful object and you fall in love with it and you want to be possessed by that beautiful object. And that is the way we should relate to God and to one another. Because according to John, God is love and he who lives in love lives in God and God in him. Amen. Let us now renew our faith. candle to remind you of your baptism. During that baptismal rite, the priest gave you a lighted candle, you and your papa and mama and ninong and ninang. And there your parents answered the question of the church about the promises that you have to make because you could not answer yourself because you were a small baby. Brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism. 
so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you renounce sin as so to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by the water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, Keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer of the faithful. Christ is the Lord of life, raised up by the Father. In turn, He will raise us up by His power. Let us address our petitions to the Heavenly Father as we pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May the Church proclaim with all courage your Son's victory to a world living in sin, in agony, and in fear. We pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May the ecclesiastical and government leaders die to their personal interests so that, like the Good Shepherd, they may serve your people faithfully. We pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May all the baptized believers die to their sins and live up to their dignity as children of God. We pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May there be new hope and life for our nation through clean, honest, and credible elections, and the advent of a capable and principled leadership, we pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May the faithful departed share in Christ's glorious resurrection, we pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. May God bless our requests at the beginning of this Holy Mass, we pray. Father, through your risen Son, we beseech you, hear us. Father, your Son conquered the power of death. Let our celebration today raise us up and renew our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, but on this time above all, to load you yet more glor gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, Exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, all of us, your bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I don't want to say the word of my soul. The body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
prayers of the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters in the hospitals and clinics and in their homes. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in his sufferings with the salvation of the world who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us pray. <clears throat> Look upon your church, O God, <clears throat> with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.